So my name is Kevin Powell, and I'm running for Congress right now. So my small story is that I am running for Congress in Brooklyn, New York, which is a, is a one of the five boroughs of New York City. Uh, we have almost three million people in Brooklyn, New York, a hundred different ethnic groups. It's one of the most diverse places, not just in the country, but in the world. And we have 70 different neighborhoods. Yeah, we have about 20, 20 uh, neighborhoods in the 10th Congressional District where I'm running. Everything from uh, Dumbo, where we're going in a little while, to a Spike Lee party. Uh, a little bit of Williamsburg, the Hasidic Jewish part of Williamsburg. Uh, Borum Hill, Fort Green, where I've lived for, Fort Green, Clinton, where I've lived for. My name is Lenny, Lenny Halstead, and um, I was born and raised here in Brooklyn. This is Brooklyn right here. Okay. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, I was born and raised here in Brooklyn. I grew up in uh, Lafayette, talk up. Yeah. Lafayette Gardens, uh -huh. uh, other known, as well known as LG. LG. And, um, for those who don't know, for those who don't know <laughs> let them know what's, what's and, up with uh, Gardens all about. Uh, Lafayette Gardens is a housing project you know, that consists of seven buildings. Um, I grew up there, uh, basically, um, from the set. one day I was walking by and I saw uh, Kevin's uh, uh, office. Mm. And, uh, you know, I put... Um, uh, two and two together. So, but if I could talk to Kevin, perhaps maybe we could, we could address this issue yeah. that's been going on for so long. And uh, talk to us about the issue. Just the, what's the, what, uh, it's uh, all the issues. It's just um, numerous. You know, uh, look at violence. The seventy-five percent of the murders in Detroit are not solved. So you can talk to me. Let okay. me know what's up. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's just that uh, a lot of murders and, and violence have been going on, plaguing, and plaguing, and you know we just got tired of it. Why do you think it's going to? Why do you think it will? It may continue. Make it to go uh, on. because of lack of education, jobs, uh, jobs yeah. um, and a lot too self-esteem. You know um, how people feel about themselves. That's right. That's right. Um, a lot of, I guess, a lot of negativity uh, as far as um, what they're listening to or, or what they're reading okay. and um, the watching, watching and upbringing. So yeah. those are, you know, particularly the reasons why I, we believe that they get involved in those type of things. But you know, we here now uh, see the issues. And we want to tackle them, and we want to deal with them. That's and, awesome. Um, that's what we're here for. People always talk about God, believing in God. What, what do you think an anchor is in order to survive in a neighborhood like that? Then, okay. what, what do you think a person needs in terms of an anchor to get you through it? When okay. you know, I, I don't. Um, for me personally, I I just I say God is the answer. Okay. But, um, there's other alternatives, you know that that others can go to, um, and we're trying to offer that to them. Right. And um, we're just here to like be uh, a door, yeah. door for them, for them to like to come. It ain't through. no like you know Dasani water. Man, <laughs> let me tell you in, in, in Bed Stuy, there's 176 bodegas and 12 grocery stores. That's a big problem. Whoa, 176 grocery uh, best bodegas, and most of the stores, you know how they are. You walk in, there's chips, there's cupcakes, there's candy, there's soda, there's 99 cent bottles of malt liquor. You know, if you want to find a bottle of water, you got to kind of dig for it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, and so it's all connected, but the problem is that a lot of folks don't realize they can organize and say, you know what, we're not going to support your business if you don't if you continue to put all this junk up here that eventually causes diabetes, mm -hmm. high blood pressure stuff that most of my family members have because that's what we see on a regular basis. And so you know, part yeah. of it, if you begin to say like, and let me tell you today, Miss Water, tell you, people were saying, well, what are you what can what are you going to do for us? And I always throw it back now. No, it's not what I'm going to do for you; it's what we're going to do for ourselves mm -hmm. because the key thing is self empowerment. And man, let me tell you something. When I was growing up, my mom, and you probably know what I'm talking about, Lenny, she would go to the corner deli and get a dollar's worth of bologna and make it last for the whole week. You know what I mean? And so she was magical. A lot of folks in our communities are magical at, at being able to make something out of nothing, man. You know, the first eight or nine years of my life, me and my mother shared a bed in the bedroom. My Aunt Kathy and my cousin Anthony, he's the same age as me, born three days before me, they had a bed in the living room. I thought it was normal for people to live like that. You know what I mean? And we didn't even have a telephone for eight or nine years of my life. We didn't get to color TV until way into the 1980s. Ooh. You know what I mean? And when I say poor, it was, it was serious poverty. But my mother always said, we're going to get off welfare. She always, you know, even with her so-called uh, uh, broken English, which I think is beautiful poetry, <laughs> when we speak, no matter where our tongue is, yeah. she would always be at school. You know, she was always fighting for me to get a quality education. You know what I mean? And, and you know, because she and she was telling me from the time I was a little boy, you're going to go to college, you're going to go to college. She planted those seeds. And so even if you come from the worst circumstances, which I definitely came from, yeah. you know what I mean? If you have uh, some belief in yourself, 
which is the key thing, self-esteem, self-esteem, self-esteem. The gardens, any advice for anybody looking to start their own company or be an entrepreneur? Well, I mean, I think you got to believe in God, first and foremost. you got to believe in something greater than yourself. You know, even when it seems hopeless, you got to have something to hang on to spiritually. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, number two, you know what kept me going as a child? And you, you, you both yeah. will appreciate yeah. this. There was um, two songs that I listened to a lot. You know, um, The Greatest Love of All and then uh, God Bless a Child. Those two songs mm -hmm. had a big, big impact on me as a child. God bless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the third thing is, um, I held on to my little dream when I was 11 years old that I could be a writer. I know how I was going to do it, mm -hmm. you know, but once I discovered books in that kind of way, uh, the imagination. Yep. So even though I was, man, let me tell you, I thought, I thought it was completely hopeless. Like there was, there was no way getting out of this as a child. I really believed that. I really believed that. But when I read those books, my imagination started to grow. And so even though I, I, I didn't get on a plane until I was 24 years old, even though, you know, I never stayed overnight anywhere outside of my hometown, mm -hmm. Jersey City, until I went to college at 18, you know, when I would open up those books, that was my little world. And so you got to find something that's going to say to you that there's possibilities yeah. out there. This is the way to reach you. So this is your, uh, your, your, uh, this is your limousine? Because <laughs> on the real cap, huh? when you and I first moved here, we couldn't even buy New York Times. Yeah. New York, even the New York Post wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And our neighborhood was different. Yeah. So, what's it's that diversity like, like, Kevin, for you now? Because um, now you represent all the diversity. I yeah, have be to. Before, I have you just part of the diversity, yeah. trying to figure out where you fit in. So, yeah. just, how does that feel? It's, uh, it's interesting, man. You, um, those are my constituents, just as much as the folks in Lafayette Gardens, the products that I was just in. You yeah. know, I got to represent everyone. I mean, you know, in a, in a way, it's not that that wild because you know our generation is the first generation to grow up in post civil rights integrated America. Yeah. I mean, most of the schools I went to growing up were integrated multicultural schools. You know, uh, the first twelve years of my life, twelve and a half years of my life, I lived in a majority black and Latino neighborhood. From age thirteen to eighteen, I lived in a majority white neighborhood, and so even as a child. I had to adapt to different environments very quickly, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I have friends who are African American, West Indian, Puerto Rican, but also had friends who are Italian and yeah. Jewish, you know, uh, Polish, and all Irish, all of those different backgrounds. And I didn't realize that even as a child, now I mean, I'm sure you could appreciate it as well, you're actually learning how to relate to different types yeah, of people. Yeah, you are, yeah, you are. And so here I am now <laughs> in the middle of a, a district that is heavily gentrified. You know, Fort Greene is very gentrified. Talk about that word gentrified. What does that mean? Because, you know, we hear it. All, see, the media writes about it. Yeah. That's why I like doing these stories. Let somebody, what is, put it in context for us. Because wow, you only hear the bad side. Yeah. got to be a good side of the word gentrification. I mean, I mean, it means a couple of things. One, it means new people coming into a community uh, to live side by side with folks who have been there for a long time. I'll give you an example. I've been in Fort Green, Clinton Hill for 20 years. There have always been black and white folks in Fort Green, Brooklyn, even though the majority had been uh, uh, black. Um, but a lot of the older white residents, have said to me privately they don't like the new white residents because they feel like they don't understand the history and the community, the, the, the texture of the community. And so gentrification means some good things in the sense that if you happen to be a property owner the way I am, you know, value to your, yeah. value to your property is going up.